Let's start. So Let's start. thank you so much for joining me, Lakshmi. I want to ask, what is that one thing that you can't do? You're a TV host, you're an actor, you're a producer, you're a mom, a homemaker. So what is that one thing that Lakshmi can't do or feels that she needs to do? Direct. I would love to direct a movie and I don't think I have 1% of it in me to do so. Um, but that, that's something I, oh, I wish I could but I don't think I ever can. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think I ever can as in Lakshmi's vocabulary. <laughs> Certain things you need to accept what you can and cannot do. The wise ones do accept what they cannot. I cannot count for nuts. My math is terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> well, that makes two of us. So now getting your life back with Lakshmi because these past seven months have been extremely trying for everybody at a personal level, professional level across. So what was the idea behind the show and what are, are we going to see? What we can hope to see? Exactly what you said, Pooja. You know, these, these seven months have been really testing and difficult for us and none of us know because this every day it was a new um, new news that we were getting. Oh, it, it's airborne. Oh, it's only on tables. Oh, you have to, it, it's not, the strains are different. I mean, every day it's new information and we don't know. Some say you die from it. Some say you don't die from it. It's just like a flu. So I started the series, the lockdown series on Insta saying, what is going on here? Can I talk to a few people? And it was just this conversation, but on live, right? And towards, I did about 17 episodes and then I was like, I could continue to do this, but how do I really package a show to, uh, that is beyond what is happening with what I was doing. And I thought, what better way than bringing two people from the same walks of life, from different parts of the world on speaking about the same thing. And you, I found it very interesting because some of they were like, wow, that's absolutely right. And some, they were like, I don't agree with him. So it was really nice to see two um, individuals who have been really successful in what they do to uh, approaching the same question in a different way. So it, that was, and then to really create hope for all of us saying that if they are going through what they're going through, um, what we are going through is not so big because the stories of suicides and losing jobs and uh, depression and, and all sorts of uh, other things that were being, uh, th that were being show uh, shown light during the pandemic. So I thought this would be a good way to connect people and bring hope and bring joy. And it's across the board, you know, I mean, I mean, some people feel that those who have privilege don't go through that, but it's just across the board because as they say, life is equal for, it's what you make of it. And everybody goes through the same thing because you come from the same earth, whether you are privileged or whether you're not privileged, but you're going through the same motions. But I just feel a lot has been brushed under the carpet. We are not discussing things that we need to discuss. We are rather actually taking pot shots at each other and playing a blame game, you know, and I'm sure both of us have been through it. So what's your take? What is that one thing you learned during the lockdown? That how little I need in my life and what were the most important things and to really, you know, I, I'm a meditator and I'm always trying to be in the moment. But that in the moment lesson only happened during the pandemic. I'm like, what am I going to do tomorrow? I'm like, don't think about it. It's right now. Right this moment is all that you have. So, um, so just being grateful for that. You know, I'm like, I'm grateful enough, but get me out of this house. But, you know, that's not the thing. So that was something that really, really... Um, that I understood and that also that I am a creator no matter what, that I can create from anywhere. And as an artist, I have so much to give because you're always, not you, I, I'm always doubting and judging myself. Oh, I've become, you know, too old and I'm not good enough. And this is it. I'll never have another show. So for every show, I'm always doubting myself because I'm a woman of, from this country because the expectations from us are different to what they expect a man to be. Um, and, and being where I am and still, still, you know, playing the field gives me a lot of joy. So, um, 
I realized I don't need anybody's uh, you can do good. I realized who I am, I, who I truly am and what I can offer to the world. So the, the, there were quite a few revelations for me. <laughs> I mean, it's the same. I mean, it's the same. I think we all are going through that. And they always say, you know, women, uh, I mean, they would say that women who spoke aloud and let everyone know their mind seldom made history. I actually feel these are the women who are now going to make history, though they might be just a short, small percentage. And that's what I like about you because your Instagram post is all about loving yourself. You know, as you put up, it's an addiction. I love myself, but nobody would know, you know, like for me, I, I would look at your post and say, she has it all. But I want to know your internal struggle. Yeah. And you, somebody who comes from the industry, what has it been like for you? You know, because everybody would say, oh, it's okay. She's grown up in the film industry. She's done these fabulous projects. She's a producer. What would you like to tell people who actually do not know the inside story? So I was born with a golden spoon. My dad is a superstar, okay? But now trying to find myself a wooden spoon for me to feed myself has been a challenge, right? So, so when people come up to and say, oh, what's there, Amma? I'm like, listen, Amma, my father is rich, Amma, not me, Amma. <laughs> like, you know, so, so I'm trying to find my balance to, to where, where I belong, you know, who am I? So this is my first talk show that I'm doing in English. You know, everything else has been in regional languages. And now they're like, why do you want to do an English show? I'm like, why is it bothering you so much that I want to do something? So um, the challenge is con continuous, I feel, Pooja. Uh, once you do one thing, they're like, oh, what else do you need? You know, it's not about the need, but it's it's the need to survive and, and to create a purpose for what you're born for. And when you have the drive to do what you want to do, I don't listen to anybody else, you know? Fantastic, because this needed to be heard because a lot of people, as you're seeing what's happening in the film industry, nepotism, oh, they have it all. It's not so, it's everywhere. Everybody is struggling because yeah. your name, as Shruti Hassan said, it's just like a handbag. It's at the end of the day, what you put into that designer handbag. Yeah, true, absolutely. Yeah. So you've had your guess. Who have been the biggest revelation for you? You know, you've got Tapsi coming or Rana Dagubati coming. Who has been like the biggest re revelation? Um, I was the most nervous uh, interviewing Rajma Garu because down, we look at him as God, like moving God, <laughs> God of cinema. So when I say, I, um, I gave him a question and I said, give me an elevator pitch. I tell you, I was sweating. The... From here, I looked all nice, but I was drenching underneath, saying he's going to hate me and never talk to me again after this, and I'm he's going to blacklist me, you know. But you got to do what's right by the job, you know. And and how do I? What can I pull out from them? What I have not. So, and I saw how um, it was nine in the morning here um, when I was shooting that because it was a different time in LA for Frank Karachi. And, uh, and he was so playful and he, he went along with everything and answered all questions so candidly. So that made me really happy. And then with Bibhu uh, Mohapatra, I mean, again, oh my God, I can't. And then I was like, so will you get me discounts when I come to New York? He's like, come on over, all my discounts are yours. I'm like, yay, can't wait to go to New York shopping with Bibhu. I will definitely make a day of that and tape, videotape all of it when it happens. You must, you must. <laughs> yeah. And who's that one person you really want to have on the hot seat opposite you? Oh, there are so many people. See, the show I thought won't even get picked up. To be honest, you know, I thought, oh, I'm doing this. It, there was there was no backing for the show saying, OK, we're going to take the show for you to do it. I just went ahead and shot it. I said, OK, let me just shoot it. And I shot five episodes and I said, OK, let me see how we can do this next, you know. Um, and uh, that's how we went to, went about it. And then everybody who I showed the trailer to, they were like, oh, my God, we want it. We want it. Wow. So, um, so, yeah, so. That's how I went about with the show. So I asked somebody, your fans, to send in a few questions. So somebody said, which is that one rumor that Lakshmi wants to start off about herself? One, what's the one rumor what? that you want to start off about yourself? Rumor that I want to start about myself. As you see, the news headlines these days are all about rumors, no? <laughs> yeah, there are so many. 
that I have real magical powers and I can turn into a unicorn when I, at, at, at night. <laughs> and one rumor you wish about you that would never come true. That would never come true. Or a rumor about yourself that you heard, which wasn't true. A bizarre rumor you heard about yourself. That I was. beat people up. You should go on YouTube. Look at Lakshmi Manchu slap somebody. I was telling my dad that yesterday. I was actually clap, you know, the clapboard. So I was clapping for a movie. So they, and that has the most number of views. I hope I, I'm not caught on tape beating anybody up. Although I wish I could. <laughs> We all do, and especially these days. These days, I really, I really do. Yeah, yeah, a big tight one. Big tight one. I'm with you on that. And I just, and what I liked about you was the way you stood up for people. You have stood up for your tribe. And also, do you feel now women will celebrate? I read a very nice post that wish women would celebrate each other's, you know, personal developments, the travel stories, the way they celebrate pregnancies and engagements. Do you think we'll come to that soon or not? Yes, we are ready. And uh, I think people like you and me have to set the platform for them. Um, again, people are afraid of what they don't know and what they don't see. When you remove the fear out of it and say, this is also okay. I mean, we never had Sangeet uh, down south until 10, 15 years ago. Now, everywhere, we were, the, the man and woman didn't really see each other that much. And now they're dancing together blasphemy how dare you in our culture but then when you remove the fear of it and brought it and made it joyful and it's no big deal we all want to do more and learn more i think we need to just break the stigmas and the ones who can and have the uh, guts to do so should do so and the rest shall follow so you were in um, an episode of desperate housewives so the question has come if you were to make desperate housewives in india who would be your ah oh. Ah, I would have Vidya Balan <laughs> just to make it all uh, exciting. I would have uh, Kangana Ranawat as uh, Brie or as Gabriel. <laughs> as Gabriel, I think she's more Gabriel. Um, mm, I'm not thinking about who from those characters, okay. but I'm just thinking from who from India just as women who are feisty and come and can, you know, really deliver. I would put Tapsi up there. Um, I have to be there. And then, and then we'll see who, who's the other fourth person who can I handle all three of us. <laughs> Tapsi and Kangana would be interesting though. I look forward to make that Indian version of this. <laughs> and also, I mean, since you have done a lot of, American shows as well and you know uh, films right here I mean I was watching your filmography I mean do you think this now they are more inclusive because when the time you started there were very few characters you know they would brown face you and project you in a certain way but all that seems to be changing now do you think so? Pooja it was changing then that's why Aishwarya Rai came to be in films yeah. there they didn't brown her and make her a brown skin yeah. person um, just that we Indian actors don't have the chops that needs to be a Hollywood actor. They really put the work in, you know, there is not one actor acting and somebody else dubbing and somebody else uh, lip syncing. If you're an actor, you have to sing your song, dance your song. Um, you know, you have to use your own voice because it's sync sound. We get away with a lot in India. You yeah. cannot in America. So switching to that and putting in the work, I think Priyanka Chopra did that work. She, it did not come easy to her. It did not matter. She was the toppest Indian star when she did. I remember seeing one of her interviews where she was auditioning for Baywatch and she, she was nervous and she said, listen, you got this. Why are you nervous? You're the, one, you're the biggest star in India. Go give it what you have. A person like that had to think about that, you know, but she was willing to do the work. She wasn't sitting there looking pretty and th things did not come to her. Priyanka Chopra made all Indians proud because she put in that work. 
So, or a Frida Pinto, or, you know, or, or the ones who are in mainstream. Most of these people go there and say, Baba, I'm a big fish here, I'll just be here. You know, it, they easily diss it because it's a lot of work. They don't like to be sitting outside of a room with another girl who's prettier than you, who's just going to go ahead before you. You know, for you to have that confidence to say, it's okay, I can give more than what she has gone in and given. So it takes a lot more for us. So, so it's not about opportunities opening up. It's about they realizing how much more work you need to do to be there. And I think now they're opening up to that because, you know, since yes. the OTT platform coming in new content, hopefully. And what about you? Are you happy with the narratives being written for women? Because you've also done films. Will we see you on screen anytime soon? Because you've done quite a few. Uh, the Lakshmi bomb, everything, and now it's acceptable. Now we have a Lakshmi bomb coming, but with a man. <laughs> he had to, he took my name. Um, what was your question again? I mean, are you happy with the narratives being written for women? Or do you think a long way to go on that as well? I think the narratives were better in the 70s and 80s than they are right now. You know, there were more- really? Because they are, okay. That's interesting. If I had to redo those movies like a Shankara Varnam, if I have to do that in, in, in uh, or a Julie, if I have to do that in, uh, uh, in today's world, I'll have to, the censors will come after me. Uh, I don't know which political party will come after me, which, uh, which society I would have hurt, which women's right, I, oh, you know, uh, which animal rights I would have hurt. I don't think I would have been able to freely tell a story. See, we as artists, we are telling you what's right, what's wrong, what shouldn't be said, what should be said. So it's, it's all out there. We can't, you can't moral, moral police us as artists, you know? Um, and I was always taught that your art cannot be perceived through other people's morality. But here it's all about morality. So, you know, what I learned to what we are put here, it's difficult. But, um, but having said that, it's still changing. I think we are, we are bringing in a new narrative and that there are uh, women that are saying, I'll only do this, you know. Um, so for that, hats off to them and more power to those women because Money comes when you run around trees, not when you're saying you're wrong, you know? Um, so, so women are holding their own and fighting that change. So kudos to them. And, and blurring the geographical lines. Exactly, and that's what I'm happy about because thanks to the OTT platform and thanks to the lockdown, I'm getting to speak to you. Otherwise it just gets very restricted that you know, you're up north, you only speak to Bollywood. If you're down south, you only speak to yes. Mollywood and you know, Tollywood and the names that they give all those woods. Yeah. True. Absolutely true, I, I agree that now this is, this is blurring uh, the lines of geography so we can, share common thoughts, doesn't matter which part of the world or country we are in. And what I've just observed, you're a great mimic. Have you ever thought of doing a show like that? <laughs> fantastic. Really? <laughs> fantastic. I'm actually just smiling talking to you, you know. And I know our time is restricted. I will have to end the interview, but I could keep talking to you because you're so entertaining. Oh, thank you, Pooja. You made my day. I think you're the first one to say I mimic well. Wow. I'm going to I'm gonna take that away today and try a few more later today. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> and has Lakshmi Manchu ever had a starstruck moment because your filmography is great that you've had Sylvester Stallone and of course you've met everybody. Any starstruck moment when you were tongue-tied? Um, when I met Ranveer Singh. Just because, yeah, his energy, like I wanted to jump on him. I almost did. Thank God uh, my friend was there to pull me back. This was in London. So I felt I could do whatever I wanted. It wasn't in India. I was like, Ranveer! But then, um, but then he was, he was where, like, he knew off of me and he was like, Lakshmi Manchu. And I'm like, you know my name. I was giddy for days to come. I took two blurry pictures, but, but they were worth it. <laughs> awesome. Anyways, lastly, I want to ask you who would be your ideal Bollywood and a Hollywood cast, or Tollywood, Indian cast and a Hollywood cast that if you were to make a film with, who would, who would be the four people you would choose and make a movie with them? Um, I would I would give my right arm to do a movie with Amir Khan. Um, I'm very I've been starstruck with him since I was a little girl. I cried both the times he got married, um, like literally cried. And then if I see him somewhere, I walk the other way because 
I, because I'm just, I don't want to like make a fool of myself and I want to keep him right there. So um, it would be him in all of India that I would want to work with. And, um, and in America, um, Daniel Day-Lewis. Not um, America, but in the West, it would be Daniel Day-Lewis because I think- Maybe you just helped him to make that comeback since he's hung up his boots when he made that yeah, I would be the, I would be the person bringing him back on set. Never say never, <laughs> right? Anything is possible now, since you are a manifesto. Anything is possible. Yes. Lovely, lovely chatting with you. So what's next? Other than the project, what's next? What's coming? I don't know, Pooja. I didn't know this was coming until a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I leave it up to the universe and just do my job of what excites me because I'm prepping on a few projects, just writing here, there. They're all on different stages, but you never know what ignites the fire and picks it up. So... I'm looking forward to that. Lovely chatting with you.